Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, I have not hit a golf ball. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm honest. I haven't hit a golf ball in about four weeks. Why? Because the weather is like this. It is Baltic. It's been freezing. The courses have been closed. It's been snowing. It's been wet, but look, I'm starting to feel a bit bad now. It's like January the what? 24th? We're getting into the year. I can't not play golf any longer. I'm going to have to brave the cold. And then Christmas is, because we have a lesson a month. You know, it'd be a lesson on Tuesday, bro. <laughs> I was like, mate. Here we are. It is freezing. Got but to keep working, got to keep working. We have. And I think, like I said, I haven't hit a ball for about three, four weeks. I did play up a close house not long ago. Shot like one, I think one or two over. Actually hit it quite well. Think, obviously, let's have a little recap. So last year, last year I did a lot of work. Towards the end of the year, we really started getting places, didn't we, really? Yeah, yeah. I think, was that the... That was when we started going wide. Yeah. If you haven't watched the lesson, by the way, we'll put the lesson in, because one of the biggest, get, I think, biggest changing things for me was when we started going wide, wasn't it? it yeah, so we're trying to control the radius, quite the hands down. They help you with your consistency, right? Yeah, we did a lot of work where it was like, it was like almost straight back and stopping the hands. So everyone, everyone's been saying your swing is shorter. And we keep saying, my swing's not shorter, it's wider. And we'll kind of maybe explain that in the video as well. Because I think everyone's like, oh my God, your swing's so short. It's, it's not, I'm just doing one thing different in my takeaway. It's made the backswing shorter, wider. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I've had a bit more consistency. But yeah, I think we'll hit some of It's my first lesson, literally of 2024. I think for me this year, I think putting's been good. I did, I did aim point at the start of last year which everyone takes a piss out of you for, but to be fair, I'm not asked. It is so good. Um, so that level of consistency with the swing, we've kind of, we've kind of got rid of the, the big misses, haven't we? That's the main thing, right? When you get to your level now, it's all about making less mistakes. You yeah, know, I feel like on the course, obviously driver helped last year, I was really good with driver, but we're not making the mistakes that were made. Thingy. So let's just hit a few <laughs> in the freezing cold. And uh, yeah, see where, we, see where we're at. Like I said, oh, my lesson is your lesson. Let's go. Right, I'm gonna hit a few of the pitch wedge. We get warmed up. Um, obviously, Chris can watch, and then we'll hit five, six, seven, or eight, or whatever, and then we'll just yeah, we'll see where we're at. And I think, I think again this year, this year, I don't know if I'll get a scratch, but I'll be my handicap is like 2.4 something now, and that's because at the end of last year I shot that level par round. Um, my first ever level par round, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. I'm actually gutted it wasn't on camera. I was actually in a competition at Close House. I've been under par a couple of times, but then I've just messed it up. We had the, obviously the round. Jimmy's channel. Jimmy and that, when I did that, had that round. So it's, la the end of last year, it really came together. So let's see where we're at. 2024, the goal is scratch. The goal is always scratch. We won't stop until we're at scratch. I will this not stop until we're there. The dedication is there. It's pissing down. I'm freezing. I'm here. I feel like we need a li I need a line where we're, where we're going here. Middle of the red flags, that's a big fair way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the middle of the red flags. That pylon you? down the bottom there, that's your target. Straight down the middle there. I'll tell you what! <laughs> it's like I've never it's been it's away. Been Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for seeing you. Oh, I tell you what is really good as well. I think there's only one swing fort now, and it's been one swing fort since like September. Consistent. So I know I can just rock up and go play golf and hit my ends pretty well and drive it well because there's, there's only one swing fort, and that swing fort is literally what it's been since September, where it's just hands quiet, club straight back, and then just that's it. And let's talk a little bit about what you said at the start about the. Whip versus length piece, yeah. Yeah, because so, this is why a lot of people have been saying my my my, my swing's shorter. This is this is what it actually is. So if we, if we talk about like I'll summarise it quite quickly. So Gaz's arms used to travel a lot more narrow. Okay, so narrow meaning the hand path, the hands would travel the same distance, but because they're narrow, this appears a lot longer than this. Okay, so all we've done is increase the radius between, or make this radius between the butt of the club and his sternum more constant. And that, for Gaz, is a, is a way of getting his body to turn a little bit more and to feel like his hands are nice and quiet. Before, Gaz would have, you know, he'd feel a lot going on at the bottom. So 
very much like Tommy Fleetwood, we're trying to feel like we're taking the hands out of it. And one thing he said there was he's had the same swing thought for ages. I'm a massive advocate of if you're consistent in your process, you're consistent in your coaching, you're consistent in your mindset, he hasn't changed too much in the last few months and he's starting to see a consistent outcome. So all these people who change their swing thoughts, search, go on YouTube every single day, different, looking for the secret, and everything's changing outside the game, how do you expect the game to start to become consistent? So making sure you're professionalizing everything around the game, keeping everything consistent, and then you start to see the results from there. <laughs> I mean, that, rusty, that one. good strike. It's very thin. Thin? Yeah, very yeah. clean. Bloody hell, something in here. <laughs> we are now on fire. <laughs> Just to add to the mix of the rain and the sleet, we're now got a forest fire. That felt a little bit, I don't know if I'm absolutely Baltic, but that actually hurt my hands a little bit. For how cool I am, I'm taking them last three strikes all day, by the way. All day. Not bad, not bad. That's a bit roly. I felt that. I went that, didn't I? A little bit, yep. Yeah. It's good that you felt that. That didn't, though. That was, that was actually much better than the other ones, because you actually, you think, although you said the ones before were good strikes, there was very much, you know, you're catching it very very clean now i'm not against shallow divots but yours is a little bit and you'll see it here on the camera look at this so at the point of impact do you want to, do you want to screen record these i think i've got a good picture oh yeah so as you come down you can see how the right foot is very much like planted on the floor there's no movement at all and watch the foot it doesn't move 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 doesn't look at your foot oh yeah so you're stuck on that back foot now this could be because you haven't played for a while and you're not moving as free as normal. But what I'm seeing a little bit is at the start it looks really, really good. You can see you're thinking, you're taking longer than normal to pull the trigger. <laughs> a lot longer than normal, there's a lot of tweaking going on. Here's what it is, that's just because you haven't practiced. Swinging back, great. You know, the one you picked up on, it's still that way or perfect, which was the second one was. But as you come down, what I see is you're almost turning on the back foot a little bit, okay? And almost giving it a little bit of right hand at the bottom. So you've hit a couple pulls. Right, so that, imagine this, if I get to the top of my swing, I turn on my back foot, pressure doesn't shift that way, and I do this, I'm more likely to add loft, pick it off the top, and pull it to the left. That, that, that might make sense on driver, that. So you, you're definitely, you're not, you're not coming over, your path would be very good, but because of this, reaction to this, you're adding loft and pulling it slightly, and you're catching it really clean. I would much prefer to see a little bit more penetration, a little bit more balter, and the way you're gonna feel that is just feeling like there's a little bit more, and we'll find a simple feeling for this, a little bit more lateral and less rotary. So first movement is a bit of a rotation, staying on the back foot. Average tall player shifts five and a half inches on the downswing collectively. So we need to feel just a little bit more pressure. So the first thing we'll do, just take a very slow practice swing. Okay, set yourself up. You've got a tea in your bag. Uh, yeah. All right, just hit. And just hit that, from there, make a swing and just hit that tee. Just gently, just real smooth. Okay, so you can do exactly the same swings and then go and get that tee. Good, right? So, yeah, so you, there was more lateral, right? And I didn't tell you how to do it. The one the one no-no with this, the big one no-no when people try and shift low point is using the upper centre to go get it. It's got to come from the ground. Some people feel it in their feet, some people feel it in their knees, some people feel it in the femur, some in the hip, some even in the rib. Don't care. Just making sure that it comes from the ground and we get this sort of separation of it. Can I just feel like I just finish my swing with a heel up. Yeah, well that's that's a feeling that you've liked before, right? Yeah, Fine. So let's just check it. So we'll do this drill. So I'll put this roughly to start with four inches in front and you're gonna try and move that tee after you've hit it, all right? Yeah. Normal smooth swings. All right, now look at the floor now. That's very, very different to every other shot you've made no mark. And that was so much purer. Right, so your attack angle is going to be more down. The low point would read more forwards. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a different sensation. Now, especially we're in, we're in the UK in the winter. The ground is soft. We should be taking a divot. But if you look at this divot, one thing I love about it 
is it's long and thin. It's not really deep. He's not burying the club into the ground. The, the club is attacking it onto the ground, but it's nice, long, thin divot. So I love the look of like a five pound note. That was awesome. Did you feel the difference in your hands there? Yeah, I, I don't know what I did though. <laughs> well, no, you just focused on the, the external factor of getting the tee, right? You don't know what you did, but it was very different to every other shot. So just feeling like you finish, your feeling. Same backswing. Okay, not bad, look at the ground. Way different. The last two shots, look, there's interaction with the floor. All the other shots you get, there's nothing. These ain't you, there's no, there was just nothing. You were flicking it, and you can see that on the video. Yeah. Right. So now we're starting to so take some... I, now I come down, I'm just kind of like, as I'm hitting it, I hit it and then just push off at that front and finish it. Perfect, here. perfect. Yeah. That's it. And remember, like, this time of year, there's so much less forgiveness. So we have to get ball first in every element of the game. Short game, iron play, we have to shift through and get that ball first. So as Mark, I said, nearly every shot had hurt my hand. Yeah. Them two didn't. Yeah, because you were catching. They didn't, they didn't even, didn't hurt a bit. That was good, that. That's what happens when you hit the middle of the face. All right. Okay, same feel, just feel that shift. Not quite as good, but still fine. Look at the ground, still interacting, but that's three in a row. You'll, some people get to get him in the comments here. Look at this in, untidy practicing. Make a nice line. Oh, yeah. Come on, you're a two handicap now. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm probably as well as seven. That's just the, oh, new, handi that, the uh, new handicap system's screwed. All right, so again, same feel. This drill, I love this drill for people. One thing to be weary of, can I jump in one second? Just for people at home, if you do try this drill and you're someone who, Gaz doesn't, but if you're someone who comes over the top, as a lot of people do, Get some no, get something down, get get something down here. Because what people do to hit this tee is they start to go, right, I can hit the tee, I'll go this way. Now it's really easy to hit the ground up here when I do that, but now I'm gonna hit this. So the aim of the game is to move the tee without hitting this head cover. So we're still coming down on arc or you know from the inside, but we're shifting to hit the tee. We're not spinning the upper torso and getting the tee that way. You can try one with that now. I wanna go and stand next to, I wanna go and stand next to that fire. <laughs> <laughs> to show everyone at home, <laughs> don't move it. The whole point is, it's there for a reason. Yeah, All right, just... All right. now just show everyone how, how to do it. All right, so focus on just moving the tee, missing the head cover, and that'll help you keep wide as well. Keep close to it on the backswing, nice and wide. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, that's gonna, look at the tee, it's not there, right? So that was a little bit of a flick. Little bit I think the ball's a bit too far forward of me, yeah. Do you know what's, hard practice areas like to set up, like. But this is the same as a golf course, right? It's hard, but this is the, if you've got access to a range like this, grass range, unbelievable. Let me aim. So you didn't destroy the tee, but you did move it. You knocked it over, you missed the head cover. I have to get that foot up, don't I? Because if I do this, even that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, so remember when you're getting your foot up, it's not, yeah. You can feel it, right? That's it, yeah, there. So it's that way. When Gaz goes, when he stays on this foot, his upper centre backs up, and that's when you feel that thinny one and clean. Remember when you're getting the foot up, and again, for people, I'm not asking him to go this way. What we see with the best players in the world, we see more like a banking first. So as they're shifting, you see how my foot's rolling before it goes onto the toe. It's not going on my toe, and I'm not spinning on my foot. I'm banking and then pivoting up from there. So that was good interaction with the ground, but do you feel that was slightly groundy? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't forward enough. So you did it, but late. You kind of went like this. I'll hit the ground and then I'll go. You've got to go a little earlier. So when does my foot start moving up? Well, you want to feel the pressure shift. So tall players are shifting forwards before they complete the top of their backswing. So they're going like this. They're recentering here. So the foot actually comes up on the way down. The, the foot happens as a byproduct of moving the pressure, right? So your feel is the foot, but if you get to the top of your swing for me, right? Great little feel. And I'll swing down, stop next to the ball. Swing up, stop next to the ball. Stop, right. So, put the club next to the ball. By this point, open your hips ever so slightly. You feel this? Yeah. You should be more here at this point. Where am I? Like here? Your foot's on the, yeah, you want to be on the floor, right? So one more time, swing to the top, just rehearsing. There you go. And, whatever, and that's what I would recommend a lot for people to understand impact, is learn impact. Some people don't know. People think that you start like this and you hit a ball like this. Well, if you look at a tall player, we see lots. We see a lot of hip slide. We see some rotation. We see some tilting. We see some lean. Not crazy amounts, but we see some. So I would just start, swing up to the top, get used to understanding, okay, wow, that's what impact feels like. I feel, I feel this 
here. And that's different if people, you know, everyone, I've asked loads and loads, hundreds of people, and they go, oh, I feel it in my left hip, my right knee, you know. So when you do that, get to the top, and then stop it impact one more time. All right, stop it impact. Right, that's beautiful. I'll put the club on the floor so I measure it properly. This knee can stay here. That's it. Now, where do you feel the biggest difference here? Oh, yeah. Are it's more like I'm twisted, but I'm open, obviously, my left. Slightly more open. My left okay. foot. And you feel bit. the pressure on your left foot? Left knee, yes. So now what we need to do is just do this little exercise. And this is another little one for people. So you do the rehearsal, get to the top, swing down, stop at this position. Start here. And again, you're not worried about in, um, outcome. From here, you just move away to a little chip and then move through. And you try and recreate that sensation and then build it up. And that's a really classic impact drill. So give that a lot of it, a lot of today is just learning how to get the body to go, cut, impact through the ball, isn't it? It's like I'm yeah. hanging back a little bit. I think yeah, you're hanging back a little bit. But remember this: you've had a you've had a month off, right? So what's the most important thing? Contact. Get yourself striking it pure again. Then worry about direction. There's no point hitting it straight in 50 yards. So hit it properly, and then start working about on on the accuracy pieces. Right. So do that drill for me. I'm going to record it. So sit preset what you feel. So your right foot's on the ground again, isn't it? Feel where you feel the left foot, swing away and then try and recreate that, just gently. Little chip. Right, so did you you definitely felt more forwards there, right? It's a different it's an uncomfortable position, but look at this. So if you if you look at the preset position, that's kind of what we'd see a tall player, that more open. Yeah. It's actually more like this is it here. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So foot's just moving a tiny bit, hips are starting to unwind, shoulders are nice and square, maybe fractionally open. There you go. So now look at that position. I know you thinned it, but look, your foot's off the ground. Yeah. Right now, you didn't try and get your foot off the ground, you just tried to recreate impact. I think, as long as I get through it, I think I can, yeah, I, think, I think it happens a bit naturally. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna make sure I get through it naturally. Now, interestingly, if you look at that ball flight, if anything, that was a two or three yard push, right? Yeah. So because you've gone more this way, getting through it, your words, You've not hit that back foot spinner, so you're not pulling it. That was much better. I much prefer that. Okay, there you go. That's, that, that's, the, that's the old one a bit. So you aim, look where the ball's gone. It's got like 20 yards left, right? And that's not a, that's like you said, the one you were discussing earlier. It's going to be on the left fringe, but that's when you stay on that back foot and flip it. So we need to get through it even more than that. Didn't shift enough. Now on that one there, do you know you didn't you, you didn't do your knee thing? Do you know like before you take a, every shot, you kind of go. Yeah. You didn't do it there, and I think you should because you can see your setups. Just look, you can't see your left knee, can't see your left, left hip, hip, can't see your left shoulder. Feet, are, so you can look at your feet, and you see everything else is pointing left. Right. So usually you do, you get into that position where you have an actual tendency to sit over it, and you go and square up. So you can see here fundamentals. We're looking at his alignment. We're looking at his setup, and we're looking at strike. We're not. I'm not getting into details around rolly phase this because he's had a month off. It doesn't need to be too deep. We just need to get him striking it, get his confidence back up again. Going to Spain next week, high pressure. Good strike, slight push. Much prefer it though. Have a look. So firstly, if you look at the setup, now we can see feet, knees, shoulders, hips, all in line. Yeah. Very different to this one. Look, can you see it now? Yeah, but why? But then I push it. Yeah, face is slightly open. Let's have a look. Tiny bit, so tiny look. Could have been wider, couldn't you? Look at this. This was your first swing of the day. This was the last swing of the day. Look at the difference in them. Look at the right. Look at the foot. Look at the hips. Yeah. You can see how different that is already. A lot of the stuff that I, I like doing is not is not like oh guys go back and I want you to to come in here or when you get to here, I want you to feel this. If you look, a lot of it that we're doing is in my setup. So my takeaway, I'm gonna go a little bit wider and then a lot of it's at impact of just getting through the ball. Like that, it, my, my, obviously my feel is just getting through it and getting the right foot up, but none of it's like club here, this, that. We do a lot of stuff in setup and then little tiny feels rather than trying to make it a lot simpler. I feel like that's why me and Chris work well together because so many coaches just try and confuse the hell out of you. We have like simple, tiny, simple feels, isn't it? Yeah, simple. 
the body's obviously acting as a rotary piece, so it's going to send the arms in and send them in. But this is now a straight line. I'm a massive advocate of this. So when you're going back now, you can aim at the butt of the club on the front one. Yeah. yeah. And then swing your nice and wide down the one behind you, and then shift. Okay, you didn't shift, but look how straight that is. <laughs> There's a mud on my face. So I've, just, I've actually been coming a bit inside, haven't I? Yeah. So it's more of a, like often, this is what I say to people, I work with some people, no, established like, players. I like going wide though, yeah, but I just, wide. it just sneaks back in. Yeah, so same, I work on the same thing, yeah, with my best players all of the time. Tendencies don't go in one, two, three, four, five lessons, one year. Sometimes eight, nine, I've worked with some players, 14 years. Same stuff, just understand it more, and we can manage it a lot, a lot better, a lot better. So Gaz's stuff is nothing. You're going to see some of this similar stuff in different videos, but my job is to drip feed the information in the right order to Gaz, so he knows what to focus on at this moment, rather than focus on 50 things at one time that we spoke about over the last two and a half years. And this one is very keeping it wide and shifting. So low point control and path, two things that we even spoke about in the last video. Consistency wise, this is what we said with Chris earlier. If I don't take a divot, right, and it isn't perfect, and I might thin it, not thin it, but I might catch it a little bit, the ball still goes straight ish. It's all right. I can still make a par from them swings I was doing at the start. Don't get us wrong, to get even better, I need to be hitting it like that. But the good thing is, with what we're doing with a takeaway, even if I get stuck on that back foot and catch it a little bit thin, You'll see in the videos, I, I overdraw it a little bit. It's on the fringe, we'll get up and down for par. Yeah, I'm still two put. So the thing is, for me, and like you'll see in the videos now, like the color when we went last time, the consistency is, is there. There's no big misses. These are all peppered. Really, look down there. Tom, zoom in. I know it seems mad, but these are all just been hit and look. You can see all the balls. They're all between their red flags. That's, that's a green there, and we're 140 out. Mate, I'm, I'm getting, you're two put and mitten par, yeah. You, you, so even though we're, we're trying to be like nitpicky and I'm trying to be the literally scratch golfer or the best I can possibly be, it's these little bits that you really need to learn. But I think we'll leave it there. Good lesson, hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, wide takeaway, try and get all the way down the line. And I'll show you this as well. So this is what I do. I always had the first of a lesson, we had a track man and the track man was in the line. And you said, try and hit the track man. You can't, because obviously you can't go, you can't, Everyone comes in with golf, and that's where my swing, my swing used to be in here, up, like Chris said, I would swing up here. If I try and get my club to hit that club, it's impossible. Literally, my left arm stays straighter, and that's me at full stretch. Look at that, look at a three quarter swing, it's not. Have you stopped there for a second? Look, that's my not, full swing. This is gas feeling wide, but what we look at, take this hand off slightly. We see a right, about a knot, roughly, 90 degrees in the bend of it, so he's still bending his arm, he's still lifting the arm, put this one back on. Yeah. This arm in reality, if you take your body rotation out now, just go back to normal. Look what his left arm's done. It's just simply lifted. So the arms are a lifting wide component and the body is the horizontal component. And that's what, honestly, if you want to try one thing, put a club down and just try and get the club to hit the end of the club. It's impossible, but it'll make you wider, it'll make you stretch, and that's my that's my full swing. Full, full I can't turn any further, and it also makes it easier to come back down on the line. Because if it goes up here and bends, then it goes that way, and that's when you start slicing it. And what have you noticed to your club head speed as well, since you've shortened your swing, apparently? Yeah, I've shortened my swing, and I'm swinging further and faster. So, but yeah, good lesson. Um, a lot of videos coming up. We'll do a few more bits with Chris, and then we'll be in La Cala for some matches and the Gazza's golf trip to La Cala, which I can't wait for. And then there's another one in March to Portugal, cats. Um, and then, yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon.